Uh, so yes, my name is Pascal Banzi, I'm one of the co-founders of Arduino. Um, and so Arduino was born uh, as part of an effort to sort of enable anybody to innovate by making technology, com complex technology simple to use. So this is kind of a, now a very generic statement anyway, that applies to a bunch of technologies, but it started off because I was teaching in designs in a design school in the northwest of Italy. And the objective was to really understand how do we design the interaction between people and technology. And the way we design this kind of interaction between things and technology changes the experience that people have and make them able to, uh, you know, to have a very good experience or a really bad experience, to be very innovative, very creative, or be very frustrated and un unhappy. So, so at, at, at Ivrea, there was this project called uh, Processing that was coming from the MIT, which was essentially designed to make it simple for artists to program and, and, and be very creative with code. So there were a number of projects that we worked on there, and sort of Arduino is the summary of all of the work that we did there. Um, but also the idea was we realized, and this is the first kind of connection with with Linux that when you have this big open source community that kind of work together, if you then make your work open source, you automatically multiply the effect of the work that you do. You make something become able to expand really fast. So the little Arduino uh, board here, which is the physical manifestation of, of Arduino, it's, it's, it's essentially, as I said, it's also the first popular open source hardware project. So there was a bunch of people trying to do open source hardware, but then Arduino is, is the most popular one. So we tried to apply it, so the idea of doing open source software also to hardware. And it's also one of the factors that enable Arduino to become very, very popular. And so our sort of work is made of building firmware, software, content, hardware, development environment, and then just you know, making them open source so that people can build upon them. That technology, and the technology is simple enough that even kids, you know, learn how to build things with uh, with Arduino, and so we enable a bunch of people to use software and hardware as a creative tool to invent, to have, to transform their ideas into something tangible that works. And so, in the history of Arduino, we cross this. Some somebody calls it movement. So this. Uh, group of people trying to, you know, again, be creative with the technology called makers. And we became one of the technologies that enabled the, this group of people to do amazing things. So, I mean, with people with Arduino build things like, you know, this is a glove that interprets sign language and helps people who cannot speak, speak through sign language and uh, uh, interface, with this glove interface to a, to a mobile phone that you know, speaks what they sign. You know, people also made self-tying laces, or people even made self-driving luggage. So this is a self-driving piece of luggage that follows you around uh, based on the Bluetooth ID of your phone. People build uh, distilleries, open source distilleries. So this is an open source device that you can do to build your, to make your own alcohol, like, you know, your own moonshine. But also people use it a lot to as an as artistic tool, so this is a, it's an interface to produce uh, music based on the way you sort of uh, touch this uh, skirt. And also Arduino ended up in more sort of uh, uh, common product things like 3D printers, a lot of the open source 3D printers, at least at the beginning, either used Arduino as their sort of main board or they used it as a, uh, the software aspect of Arduino became sort of part of the device, also drone use that. So how, how does Arduino and, and Linux cross? <laughs> it starts off from the fact that I used Arduino and Linux for, for a long time. This is my Linux counter badge, which says I registered in 1998, but I did install it the first time in 1993, and it was a very rewarding and yet a very painful experience of downloading 70 floppy disks from the internet and just, you know, doing that. But luckily there was a guy that installed Xenix with us, so it helped us and we made it happen. 
But I think, apart from the jokes, um, with the founders of Arduino, and especially me and, and the guy I'm strangling, which is his name is David Quartieres, the two of us used uh, Linux a lot in our previous life, in our career. We were very driven by the idea that you know open source can really help to change the world a little bit. Uh, and, and we felt that the work that we did had to be open source, so we took a bunch of stuff that maybe we worked at at the institute that wasn't open source and we made it open source and also we tried to extend that concept to hardware because we saw how the Linux community was very successful and we wanted to try to replicate that into a different field where also hardware is involved. So in fact at the beginning there were not something as effective as the GPL license for hardware so we used creative commons. So hardware became, you know, a little bit like poetry or music, you know, so it's an interesting, interesting uh, concept. At Arduino right now, we use Linux a lot. Most of our developers use Linux. Uh, also, the people who design the hardware, uh, all of the machines that test uh, the products that come out of the factory are based on embedded Linux, our web infrastructure, a number of our products. We worked a, a few years ago on the first attempt at mixing Arduino and Linux, so bringing together the technology behind the BeagleBone and, uh, and a microcontroller so that we could experiment on different ways of programming these devices where you can, uh, in a way, uh, distribute the computing between the Linux machine and the microcontroller. We have this other product which is more uh, widespread, uh, it's called the Arduino U, and it has a tiny Linux machine embedded inside the shape of a classic Arduino. And again, this is what you would consider some kind of an edge device, but incredibly simple and incredibly small. And Arduino right now is, you know, is a fairly popular platform. We have 150 million sessions on the Arduino.cc website. We have half a million registered uh, people on, on the platform. <coughs> and we have about 12 million downloads of our development environment every year. And we have this uh, online platform I will talk to you about a little bit later called uh, Create, which has 400,000 users. And we have this yearly event called Arduino Day where people sort of get together on a Saturday to uh, kind of celebrate uh, Arduino as an open source project, which last year had 500 events all over the world which were completely organized by the community. And um, it was very interesting to see this happening because we just say, you know, hello people, Arduino Day is on this day and then 500 group of people around the world that just set up an event. And we put them on a map and it's just amazing to see. Um, so we, so with the work that we did so far, we really enabled as a ton of people uh, to use uh, this technology uh, as a creative tool. And it's used by people who teach technology, by people who build prototypes, it's used by big companies uh, to prototype ideas, it's used for uh, building even uh, prototypes or even products started off. A ton of products you use started off as an Arduino prototype. And, um, and so that, that, was, that, that was very interesting to, to see. And then this whole, you know, IoT uh, revolution happened. And then we realized that the complexity goes up. You know, there's even more factors to, 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 to keep in, in mind. So how do we, we start to figure out how do we make it simpler for people to also build connected products? Because again, Arduino is, is very much a bottom-up type project. Uh, a lot of people use it, sometimes even at work, actually a lot, they use it a lot at work. But it never comes from like, official channels, it's going to happen because people use it and it's useful to them. And again, that reminded me a little bit about Linux at the beginning. People started to use it because it was making, because they loved it, because it was making their life simple. And um, I used to be the webmaster of like the biggest at the time, an internet provider in Italy, and we were paid by Microsoft to have the main web server on Windows NT, so we ended up recompiling Apache to pretend to be internet information server, so that we can still use Linux as the main web server, <laughs> and still be sponsored by Microsoft. I think, 
it, if, if that's uh, enough years have passed that it's not a crime anymore. <laughs> so, so I can talk about it. But again, you know, it was so useful and it just, you know, it just grew from, from the bottom. And again, that's something that I like, you know, to help people uh, and make their life simpler with simple tools. So in IoT we have this challenge. This is a slide that every year people at First Smart Capital put together of all the different brands involved in IoT. It's insanely big. We are somewhere down there, oh, in the corner next to the Raspberry. But a lot of these IoT platforms that people are building right now, they're actually quite complicated for everyday people. And you need to be an expert in all different disciplines in order to have one light turned on. And how we fix this in a lot of different ways. The way we are trying to help fix this thing is based on working on the user experience, and making things simple to use. In the end, there's no incredibly advanced technology in Arduino. It's just a, a, a way to redefine the way you use certain technology and make it simple for people to understand, simplifying some things, moving some complexity over to the software. The second thing is for sure open source. I think one of the things that was very good for Arduino is that since it was um, uh, open source, a lot of people feel that it was they were not locked in, so they used it everywhere. And also edge computing, we like the idea that you can run your own computing next where the action happens and you don't have to use like big, uh, you don't always have to use big uh, cloud that way you don't know where the data goes. So it's, in a way, we like this uh, combination. So apart from the design aspect for us is very important because we realize that people ignore whatever design that ignores people. This is a quote from an American designer. But you have to understand a lot of very interesting projects very powerful piece of technology are ignored by people because they're complicated to use. And at the end of the day, you've never heard about somebody taking a class on how to learn how to use Facebook. And, and that's, but that's the problem with a lot of pieces of technologies you work every day. Since they're designed for professional users, there is this idea that you need to suffer, that it needs to be a painful experience <laughs> because you're a professional. Why? So we need to make these tools simpler to use. We need to remove friction. So friction is what happens when people are interacting with the digital interface of any product, and basically what they're trying to achieve is made complicated because they have to apply more, in a way, energy than it would, that would be needed. Obviously, we are a big supporter of open source interoperable system. I'm not going to talk about that because there are people much more qualified about that. From our way, we try to build small open source devices like these ones. These are little sensor nodes that support all the different uh, network protocols. They're low power, simple to program, and you can sort of build your edge, edge, edge sort of uh, nodes with this. And we also build this cloud platform that we think it's going to simplify a lot the way people work. So we put essentially the Arduino development environment in the cloud. So you need just a browser and, and you can program. Um, we also started to capture more of the project, just, not just the code, but also the hardware inside the Arduino sort of project uh, that, you, that you pick. We support a ton of architecture, so now we, don't, we support probably about 15 different types of processors. So you can just write code with Arduino and move it around different platforms quite easily. We have over 4,000 libraries that support all sorts of sensors and actuators and protocols. So if you want to build something, you just open this, you type the name of a protocol or a sensor, click, you're done. And we also build this tool, which is based on the Hackster platform, but it's integrated into uh, Create, where people can actually describe whole projects. And you can actually find pre-made solution like you know, RFID attendance system or you know, pool controllers, all sorts of different applications. And you can click on a button and, and the code for this application will end up in your project on the cloud and you can, you can build it very easily. There are some examples that we made. We also have a simple, at the moment it's very simple, it's just an experiment of something very simple that allows to connect the device to the cloud and manage it. It's evolving into something much, much bigger, which will make it easy for people to build IoT application. So our objective is that we have never to be able to build like the most complex application ever, but to enable a ton of people to build 
like the most common use cases very, very easily. And a lot of, basically all of this will be open source. But we're adding a couple of new things that I've been talking about here for the first time. So we realized that in order to go forward, we had to go back a little bit. So we built this thing, which is a small copy. You don't see very well because this, the, screen, the, the text is very small. So we built the equivalent of the Arduino IDE, development environment, as a common client. So you can now say things like Arduino new, and it creates a new project. Arduino install library, boom, installs a library. So you can now use whatever development environment you like, and you can use a bunch of you know, command line tools to automate all of this, and it's fully integrated in the things that I told you before, like 4,000 libraries and all of that. And uh, so here is just showing an example of somebody creating a project, connecting to a board, compiling and uploading the code uh, to the board, to the command line. And um, so basically now our classic desktop ID, the cloud ID, and this thing are sharing the same code. So uh, you can basically embed Arduino as an engine inside a project and you can take code, compile it, and upload it just by calling this, uh, this thing. And we also have ways that you can connect this to the Arduino website so that you can, uh, you can basically uh, use the Arduino website as a way to share and store your code in the cloud. But one thing that I think is very interesting that we are working on is that there's a bunch of these Linux single board computers that people use. But we felt that a lot of the Arduino users, they find the classic way of dealing with kind of Linux and installing the operating system quite complicated. That stops them from uh, using this effectively. So we worked uh, with a sponsorship from Intel, and we basically made Arduino able to generate Linux programs. So you can take your Arduino code. I'm gonna show you quickly the super fast Demo, if you can see. So the idea is that starting from now, the thing should be online, as in like in two minutes from now, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to go get a Raspberry Pi, for example, and just connect it to this thing, and you just type the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, you press a button, this the Arduino create will connect to the to the Raspberry Pi, install a bunch of software on it, and connect it to the Arduino cloud, like it's doing right now. So you literally need an IP address, the username and a password, and the whole thing will automatically happen for you. Then you give a name to your device, and then you have this thing called My Devices, where you see all your devices there. And then you can take a piece of code, a piece of code that you're running on a classic Arduino board, and you can just say, okay, I want to compile it for the Raspberry Pi. So it will take that Arduino code, compile it, turn it into a Linux application and over the over the internet install it on your device anywhere it is. So if you, you see the code is controlling some funky LEDs, but you know so the, the idea is there's a ton of people that know how to use Arduino and they can take their knowledge and apply to this. And once you have these devices attached to your Arduino cloud you can then manage them remotely. So here's a control panel where you can uh, sort of set a few parameters, monitor how your device is working, you can configure the network, um, you can even run multiple Arduino programs in parallel, and you can even do things, if you're on an Intel platform, you can even do computer vision inside Arduino, which is an interesting uh, concept, it's really cool, you can, so you can just use OpenCV and Arduino in the same code running uh, on Linux. And you can also install software packages, you can manage your packages, and you can manage your uh, repositories where you get the packages from. So in a way this, um, and again, you can take your code, compile it, and deploy it. So the idea is this is going to make, uh, use it, it's going to make it very easy for people to use devices like Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, and a bunch of Intel-based uh, single board computers to uh, it's become very easy to use and very easy to program at the edge. Clearly, uh, the software that we developed is either already open source or is becoming open source like tomorrow. So you can also use it for whatever project you're building. Because 
our idea is to try to create an experience where you learn one step at a time, you build up your knowledge one step at a time. A lot of people find themselves in front of uh, tasks that look like a wall that you have to clean, climb with your bare hands, and it's too complicated. So the idea was, why don't we break that down into like steps that take people there one step at a time, and we've seen it with what we've done until, with Arduino until now, that if you do this process, you enable really a ton of people to do amazing stuff. And you know, uh, and then later on they, they learn and they deepen their knowledge and they become, you know, maybe they study more and they become professionals, but we enabled a ton of people that before they never thought that they could do embedded programming and now they do it and they're contributing to the community. So if you want to try it out, go to create.arduino.cc and check it out. It's going to be, it should be online now. If you have comments, you want to work with us, you want to build a project with us, whatever, send me an email. And thank you very much.